A lever gun from Smith & Wesson? Let's check it out. Smith & Wesson, known for their lever action revolvers and also their semi-automatic pistols. Uh, they have ventured out some over the past couple of years, but little is known about the patent they own for the 1854 lever action. It has its roots in the Volcanic Lever Action Company, which was back in the early 1850s. Horace Smith and Daniel B. Wesson bought the company. Um, they produced some lever action pistols and one lever action rifle, but they did own the patents. Later on, it was sold to Oliver Winchester of the Winchester Gun Company. And their shop foreman was Benjamin T. Henry. This gun has roots in almost all of the major founders for the lever action rifle and what has made it so famous and popular today. But Smith & Wesson's taken a whole new approach. This is definitely a very modern lever action rifle. With the 1854, I mean, this is a very modern hunting rifle. Uh, great for the all weather, I mean, the stainless steel. And then there's a lot of accessories that really update this to the 21st century. Now, Smith & Wesson invited me to their new factory up in Maryville, Tennessee, and I got a chance to try out the model 1854 while I was at the range. Uh, we had a great time there, and we really appreciate Smith & Wesson not only for inviting us up and kind of getting a sneak peek of some of the other guns that are coming out this year, but also for sending the model 1854 for this review and adding this to my collection. It makes it great when I have multiple rifles that I can compare, which we will be doing some comparisons with the Henry's and the new Marlins coming up. The guys lever action rifles. I mean, they're just as popular today as they ever have been. Well, it's definitely a modern design uh, from an old patent. There for a while, Henry Repeating Arms was the only game in town, really for high quality lever action rifles. And of course, we have a Marlin back here. And you know, when Ruger bought Marlin, they really have changed the game. So this is another addition. But now with Smith & Wesson, we have another option. And guys, this rifle is really built for hunting, uh, but it has a lot of different features that just really modernize the the lever action rifle. And lever action rifles are really fast, and so they make a great option. They're light, they're handy. So there is a lot of appeal. And as far as long guns, this is as Americana as you're gonna get. Of course, caliber is 44 Magnum, and that is nine rounds in the tube and then one in the chamber. So it gives you quite a bit of capacity. But you can also shoot 44 Specials, which are gonna give you a little less recoil uh, and a little softer shooting. But the one thing about 44 Magnum is you can get some really hot loads. And there's a lot of different choices. Now, one great thing about 44 Magnum is you can have a revolver on your hip using the same ammunition. Uh, of course, with the rifle, you're going to get even better ballistics. Now, making sure the gun's unloaded, drop our lever, look right down into the loading gate, and it's empty. One of the big pluses for this rifle is that it's set up to be an all-weather carbine. Uh, 416 Ford stainless steel receiver, uh, 410 stainless steel 19.25 inch barrel and we have a composite buttstock and four in uh, you know with wood sometimes you know it can get scratched damaged especially if you're out hunting and honestly you know it doesn't hold up as well as your polymer furniture really nice soft butt pad of course that composite stock it does have a pistol grip and we have texturing all through the pistol grip it's got the same type texturing that a lot of your handguns are using with that Kind of soft to the touch, but yet it gives you a lot of grip ability. Have a Smith & Wesson logo on the end cap, and we have a stud for a sling swivel. 
It has an enlarged lever, allows you to really get that smooth action, and it is a smooth action. But great for gloved hands, especially again when you're hunting, a lot of times it's cold weather. Just gives you a very smooth action, and again, that lever, it's just a black carbon steel, and it matches well with the furniture. Guys, it has a flat face trigger, and it does have some action, just some free play. It has a nice crisp break. We'll look at that, and we'll check the trigger pull. But the geometry of the flat face trigger has proven to be one of the best, especially for accuracy. Now included is a hammer spur, uh, and I attach this. You can go without it, but especially if you have scopes, just gives you a little more room to bring that lever down. And one thing I like is that it has a cross bolt safety. So here we have it on fire, and as we bring this back, we can engage it, and now it still drops. And I like that. Now it's going to drop on a transfer bar. And so this is going to make this safe to be able to carry. You put the safety on, it's going to be a cross bolt safety. And so that way when you're lowering the hammer, it's not going to rest on your firing pin. We can half cock it, that allows you to engage your safety, and then pull it back, and then you can fire your rifle. And the receiver has a really nice satin finish to it. And of course, all the pins and the screws have the black contrast. Uh, nice loading gate, and it's easy to load. Of course, with 44 Magnum, it's going to be pretty short. And then you can see we have our bolt, and it is just a round bolt. I mean, it hits nice and smooth. Picatinny rail on top makes it real easy to be able to mount different optics. Uh, and then we have the ghost ring sights. Now, I'm a big fan of the ghost ring, uh, and these are excess sights. And then we have a front sight post with a gold bead. And this really shows up well at the range. But to me, the metal parts on here are finely finished, and again, it's that satin color, and it's just very well done. It has a very clean look to it. The forearm has some really nice texturing as well, just like on the pistol grip. It's going to give you a good solid grip. And we have M-lock slots here at 9, 6, and 3 o'clock. And then we have a stainless steel cap at the end, and we have another stud here for a sling swivel. Threaded barrel with a thread protector, uh, and this is 11 16 by 24 thread pitch. And then we have the tube, and this surprised me just a little bit. So we have our tube, it's knurled very well, and it just comes out and it has the holder right here. And of course the tube comes out really easily. Uh, and then we have just a hole here. Now this is not made for loading. Uh, I think with a Henry they have it where you can load and unload. This is really made to quickly unload your rifle. And so instead of actually having to you know, accentuate the lever and to release those rounds, which can be a little bit dangerous. Even though you can do that with this rifle, you just want to put on your cross bolt safety and that'll give you protection. But to make it a lot quicker, uh, they just have this port here and you just turn up and then all the rounds fall out. But again, this is not made for loading. And of course it just goes right back in and snaps into place. Now with the large loop, it's going to be great for gloved hands. Uh, even with the flat face trigger, it just gives it a, easy to be able to use gloves. And obviously when you're out, especially during hunting season, it can get really cold. Of course, the great thing about the Picatinny rail is obviously you can put scopes on there. And, but yet, without the Picatinny rail, it still looks good. And the ghost ring sight really looks nice. But, you know, we were using one of the mini Trigicons. Uh, I have shot this again with a full scope and, you know, it, it's just right at home on it. But the Picatinny rail is there in case you want to take it on and off. Well, with the M-Lock slots, this is going to give you a lot of capability. Uh, first off, of course, with a light, um, especially in low light situations, I mean, having a light on your rifle is great. Even for home defense, having a good light attached to an M-Lock slot, it just really goes well on this rifle. But then again, if we want to change out and we want to get some accuracy or, you know, we want to have a point to where we can really get some stability, having a bipod on the rifle just makes sense. And with all the different choices, and of course with the M-Lock, you can put different type bipods on there without any trouble. Of course, a suppressor really works well, especially for hunting, especially for hog hunting. And that gives you an option. We didn't try out our suppressors on them, but this is just a great host. Weight on the model 1854. Right about five pounds. We're going to check trigger pull action. Of course, we have a flat trigger. I think that's really cool for lever action. Flat triggers, the geometry really makes it just ultimate for trigger pull. Now, one thing I want to note, I want you to notice is that it does have some free play in here. In fact, if you kind of shake it, it moves back and forth. 
uh, but it doesn't affect the trigger. Now let's go ahead and pull our hammer back. And then a little bit of take up. I mean, just a touch. Really nice break. Not that like incredibly crisp, but it's definitely a nice crisp break. Trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge. Three pounds, 4.5 ounces. Three pounds, three ounces. Big thank you to Fiocchi for sponsoring our ammo. Uh, all made in the USA. One of the biggest suppliers of ammunition in the country. And when you're loading in your rails in the loading gate, just push it just to the rim. Don't push it all the way. It makes it so much easier. You don't have to push that loading gate down. And it's really smooth. Especially once you get a lot of rounds in there, it gets a little bit tighter. That's a little trick that'll save your sanity. Especially with these shorter rounds. On that last round, just push it and then the loading gate will pop up. Go ahead and rack your lever and the rounds in there. You can hit the cross bolt safety, go ahead and lock that and then the hammer will fall so it's not a danger of letting that fall on a live round. Now here I have a tube. If I turn it open, I can release those rounds right out without having to rack this every time. Just like that, I got that live round out. Now all the rounds are out. It's easier, it's safer, and it's fast. Be careful because your tube will go flying out. It is spring loaded. Guys, this is a big surprise. <laughs> Smith & Wesson 1854 lever action. Absolutely beautiful gun. I mean, really made for hunting. I mean, it's made up to modern standards. You got your polymer stock, polymer forend, M-lock compatible, threaded muzzle, Picatinny rail, ghost ring sights, large lever for your hands. I mean, it just puts it all together. And whether you put a light bipod, put your optic on here or not, a very handy rifle in 44 Magnum. And great brush gun. Nine plus one, and we've got it loaded down. I mean, that gives you 10 rounds in a lever action. And lever actions can be really fast. Uh, it's one of the things about states that you know, can't have an AR-15 or have magazine restrictions, but this still makes a great option. And man, I mean, it's that traditional look, and it's Smith & Wesson quality, which honestly, this really did surprise me. So, looks like we've got some more competitors in the lever action market, and it's just great to see. Smooth like butter. Now in the owner's manual, it talks about disassembly, uh, which a lot of lever action guns do not talk about, but how to maintain and clean the rifle. So first thing we're gonna do is, is just go ahead and open up our lever. And then we take a Torx wrench and it's a T20 and you just go ahead and turn it. And we're gonna bring this out. It gets to a certain point and then you have to push the bolt through. Once it starts to spin, and then just from the other side, just push it through. Next, we're going to pull our lever right out. Next, you want to hold down the hammer and go ahead and pull your bolt out. Take a pair of needle nose pliers or tweezers and we're going to pull out our extractor. Just like that. Now, Smith & Wesson recommends that that is as far as you go for your cleaning. And of course, you can clean through the breech right here and get your barrel. Uh, and then we'll look at the bolt. Very simple cylinder bolt, 
and then here is where the ejector goes. Now you notice this little slot in the bolt and here we have our lever that causes this to go back and forth. This is what brings your bolt out. So for cleaning, maintenance, whatever you want to do, again, this is as far as you want to go. Now you'll notice how the ejector fits right here in this slot. And so it comes down and it pushes those spent shells out. And it is spring loaded. Now for reassembly, we're going to first enter our ejector. And you'll notice this little tab on the end, this little circle. And there's a corresponding circle at the end of this little groove. Now from the back of the receiver, you can see that little groove, you can see that circle where the ejector goes into. We're going to take this end of the ejector, we're going to put it into that groove, and once you slide it, you can feel it go into that little notch. And it actually drops into place. Next, we're going to hold our hammer down and we're going to bring our bolt in. And once you're putting your bolt in, don't go too far. Uh, because it'll go past the area where you can hook to your lever. So we're going to get in here and go ahead and find that lever in the right spot, right there. And so see, that actually works it. Now let's just put back in our screw. And once we get it tight, we can open up our bolt, making sure everything's working. And it is. And one thing they say is do not dry fire the rifle with it on fire. Make sure that you have your cross bolt safety engaged. It just assures safety. Now they're also going to be offering some blued steel versions with a high grade of fancy wood. They're beautiful. Uh, the wood grain is just absolutely gorgeous. And of course it's got that polished blue. And this is obviously more of your traditional hunting rifle. But again, there are going to be limited editions and those will probably go pretty quick. One thing I also noticed is that while this is 44 Magnum, uh, in the owner's manual they did list 357 Magnum and 45 Colt. So it looks like they're going to be adding additions to the 1854 line. Now of course we will be doing some comparisons between the Henry, the Marlin, and the Smith & Wesson just to get a feel for them, but we'll be doing that in a little bit later video. I think one of the big things about this rifle, it just has a lot of different features. And of course, the large loop, we have the Picatinny rail, uh, excess ghost ring sights, we have M-Lock compatible. Um, you can unload this really quickly with the tube. Also, it's threaded. And you've got your composite stocks, stainless steel, receiver, and barrel. Uh, this thing is built for the elements. I mean, it's a great rifle to be able to take out and hunt with. You don't have to worry about it. I know a lot of times when I come in from hunting, cleaning my rifle is not always the priority. And so this just gives you a really good solid base. Now you want to clean your rifle, obviously. And again, guys, lever actions have really made a comeback. I mean, they've always been popular here in the U.S., but there's something about a good lever action rifle. While it's slower in a sense, I mean, you can really get some rounds down range quickly. Now the MSRP is $1,279 and of course you go to your local dealer once these really get out into the market and you typically can get it for less. And guys, lever action rifles have risen in price over the past few years and a lot of it has to do with a lot of the fitting and a lot of what goes into putting one of these together. And that's the going price whether it's a Marlin or a Henry. But I think that the stainless steel action and the stainless steel barrel is a huge plus. And obviously, uh, this polymer furniture, I mean, it's going to hold up extremely well. You can really modernize this rifle. Guys, a big surprise, but really bringing the lever action up to date from 1854. Uh, and this is definitely one that you take hunting, uh, you just take to the range, even as a home defense firearm. I mean, the lever action is really quick and being really weatherproof. That makes a big deal. Of course, all the different accessories that bring this up to the 21st century. And again, a big thank you to Smith & Wesson for sending the model 1854 for this review. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.
Isn't that right? Yeah. And trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells. So we're gonna check to make sure the gun is unloaded. We're gonna open up the cylinder. Okay. Smith & Wesson will also be at, okay. Now Smith & Wesson will also, okay. With the M-lock slots, put picket, okay. You can put with a, okay. With a, um, with the on, 